Okay, Corporate America. This is a recent Kickstarter that I was given a review copy of through 2d6.org. Um, and they've done a real job of kind of promoting it. I see uh, Tom Basil has his video for it. A number of other people have videos. They uh, produced their own in-play videos of it uh, to try to drum up support. And it looked interesting. So I want to give it my take on things, which is going to be a little different from anything you probably see anywhere else. Uh, I'm going to be playing it solitaire. I haven't gotten a chance to play it uh, opposed yet. However, I feel some additional view uh, of it as, you know, from, from my perspective would be helpful to some people. I hope that you all take some enjoyment of it. Now, this is the introduction section of my coverage. I go through the entire playthrough and then I go to a review. In the introduction section, I largely go through the rules. I, you can probably find the rules better from someone else, to tell you the truth. But I do this in part as a learning experience for myself and in part because some people, I think, follow my vids and end up watching this section in order to prepare themselves for the playthroughs and don't really bother necessarily with some of the other uh, uh, so some of the more all-in-one review type review and, and rules introductions and all that all-in-one uh, video so if what you really want is just an overview of the game this isn't the place to come I'm gonna go through the rules and the learning process I've already skimmed the rules or read them, understood them, and have forgotten them <laughs> in the course of a couple of days. That's very much like me. What do you get for components? You get a board to hold cards, basically. Uh, it also has a few tables on it, but for the most part, uh-oh, I'm going to have to move these up because that protests. There's going to be cards that go there. Uh, you get these money cards, which are quite nice, actually. A lot better than paper money, probably, for a game of this nature. Probably is at least as good as chits in, say, uh, an Illuminati type game. You get a, se a set of decks of cards. Now, these cards themselves have a bit of an issue that I want to talk about that I noticed right away when I picked them up. Uh, I've kind of got these jumbled together. These shouldn't all be in one pile. Um, you see this little mark here. These just came out of the wrapper, and that was already there inside the wrapper. Basically, these cards are easily damaged. Now, that's not a big deal for me, for the simple fact that, you know, I play with my cards unsleeved and shuffle them, and they're liable to all get marked up. But what you're going to see if you play with sleeved cards is your backs are... Uh, the cards that were on the outside of the wrapping may well have suffered a little bit of damage just in normal shipping. It's just a normal plastic wrapping. I don't know why. Uh, maybe mine got shipped particularly uh, <laughs> roughly. The box is nicely solid. About a GMT style armored box. Uh, fairly decent. Maybe a little lighter. You've got a couple of components you get this, which is going to be your order, your play marker. It moves around the board to indicate what uh, segment of the game you're in. And then you got this little thing uh, to mark the president. And they suggest give him a funny hat or something instead of something more impressive than that. Whatever. Uh, the game takes a look at kind of the modern business political interrelationship but it takes a very humorous view on it or an attempt to be humorous view, uh, with some realism behind it and we'll take a look at how this all works but let's uh, let's look at how the rules actually work together first of all the goal in this game is to have the most cash or the most value at the end of the game um, so the person who goes first in this game, and some games have these, I'm always kind of iffy about them, we usually end up uh, house ruling them away, but not always. 
this one has a who goes first rule that's kind of goofy. It's whoever has the most cash on their person. Not, nothing to do with the game. You can, of course, roll a die, but there's no die in this game. So, you know, you don't need a die. It'll work. Um, okay. And then uh, everybody gets cash to begin the game based on the number of players in the game. And they give you a distribution of cash. I'm not sure how much the distribution means. But you're allowed to keep your money secret. And again, the back sides of the money allow you to keep it kind of as a hand of cards. Um, the extra money should be put to the side of the board. There's specific rules that say you can't cheat by stealing money from the treasury. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know the need for that, but whatever. Um, okay. Then each person's going to get five of these business cards which are going to indicate various uh, types of businesses, essentially. Um, you have kind of a, an indication of what the, uh, what the company is and a little quip about them. This is the um, cost that it's going to be to put that company into production. And then this is its income. Each time it matches, each time one of these consumer ideals is matched. So, for example, entertainment or media comes up on the board, it'll end up giving you that income. And then it has a special ability here of sponsoring. Once each Main Street phase, you're able to turn over an extra consumer card more cheaply, which is a real nice little bonus. Okay. Uh, so you start with a handful of those, five of them, or four if you're playing with a five-player game, which I probably will. And the other decks get shuffled and placed into their locations. We're going to only use four of these executive privilege cards, and they're sort of the timekeeper. Each election, the president gets one of those, and once they're all out, the game is about to end. Now, starting on each turn, you start on the Wall Street phase. We'll kind of clear some of the space here so you can see the board. <laughs> you don't really need a board on this. Maybe the Kickstarter said, hey, we'll give you a board if we make certain requirements. Otherwise, we'll just give you some little play cards or something. I don't know. Um, and you start with the president. And each player is going to take three steps in this phase. You can do these simultaneously, but I can see good reason why you want to order them in particular. Basically, each person is allowed to draw two cards from the business deck. Then they must discard a business card from their hand. Just goes into the discard pile. And then they're allowed to start a single business from their hand by paying the startup cost, the number in red up here, from their cash on hand into the treasury. And by the way, this is actual money. You can make change with this stuff. It's not uh, like venture or something like that where the cash is limited. Um, now, on the first turn, you have special abilities. You're allowed to start up to four or three businesses based on the number of players. If you have three or four players, it's four. Five players, it's three. This game will not work in two players. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, I can't guarantee it, but it's got aspects to it in the bidding for the presidency that you're going to lose a lot of the game in two players. So that's one of the reasons I didn't try playing it opposed. I didn't think it would inform much about my uh, decision of the game because it's unlikely I would be able to find a third player right now. Okay. Um... So, when everybody's uh, started their businesses in the Main Street in the uh, Wall Street cycle, they go over to the Main Street cycle, and we just move this token. That's all it's really used for. It's just a pawn. Uh, now, in the Main Street cycle, at this point, and at certain other points in the game, you're allowed to just give money to people. This is one of those times when you can, uh, in order to help them decide certain things. Okay, um, so at this point you're going to be filling 
these spaces with consumer cards. You're allowed to reveal any number of consumer cards you like, but if you only reveal one, it's free. The second one's going to cost you four dollars. The third card costs you six more dollars. So it's ten dollars to turn uh, three cards over. Now remember, we've got like this sponsored, which can cut the cost of turning those additional cards over. And this just kind of steamrolls into a very expensive set. But the advantage of turning over, and this starts with the president and goes around, somebody may get more than one opportunity. The advantage of turning more than one over, if you only turn one over, it just goes up there. But if you turn two or three over, you pick one to put up there, and it can be uh, something that you have good reason for, or something that people have good reason to give you money to choose. There are protest cards buried in here. There's one. They show angrier people. Okay. <clears throat> if they show up, they're going to go up here near the protest area and they just collect up there and the president's going to have to deal with them. Uh, if the deck runs out, you reshuffle it. I think the same happens with the uh, business deck as well. Yep. Uh, and if you do draw one of these protest cards, you get a free replacement. So if you bought like three cards and two of them are protests, you don't get hosed by that. The protests just go up there. Could be kind of interesting to make them an additional potential penalty, but whatever. Now, we keep going around the board until all six of these spots are filled. And each person can only fill one in their action, no matter how many of these cards they purchase to, to put up. Once they are all filled, well, let's keep looking here. Um, so when a consumer card comes up, it's going to have an industry value. So this is the sin industry. This is the luxury industry. Okay. Uh, this is transportation industry. And if those match, for example, transportation here, a business is, uh, what a business supplies, the owner of that business gets that income. Now, some businesses have synergies that allow them to make more income. Uh, in that case, you get a bonus based on the amount of industries that have that bonus. So let's see, if you have more than one business of the same industry, so if I had two transportation industries here, let's say I had these two in play, I would collect not only the 16 bucks for these two, but I would also collect an extra two for having a synergy bonus of two. Now those also rise in what looks like almost um, a geometric order. Not quite. <laughs> but they do ra rise more rapidly than linear, so you can get quite a bit of money off of getting enough synergy there. Which is a reason why somebody may want to cause y your synergy to break up. And there are re ways you can do this. There are also cards that have PR problems in red. For example, this one has polluting. Uh, these don't get consumed like industries. Some legislation can affect them and cause them harm. That's, it, it's just to indicate that there's some uh, waiting disaster for those companies that you have to worry about. Uh, so. Once you play eight consumer cards, then they're discarded. You don't use that section of the board very much. Uh, the protests remain where they are, and then you go to the campaign trail. Now, if you finish the Main Street phase, and these have all been played out, and there's only going to be four of these, 
the game ends immediately and you score. So during the campaign tra trail phase, you're going to get to determine the next president. You're not allowed to bribe in this phase. Ooh, <laughs> that seems strange. Okay, but there is a way to transfer money to show support to the president you want. So what's going to happen is six legislation cards, and that's these suckers, are going to be turned face up into here. These are going to be the election issues. Uh, based on your businesses, you might like some and dislike others. So for example, this one has a law which will help uh, each Main Street phase play an extra consumer card, nine instead of eight. Oh, the, no, there's eight consumer cards, not six. I'm sorry. Uh, that's why these are blue. Uh, each Main Street phase play one extra consumer card. The extra card can't be changed. I wonder what that's supposed to mean. Oh, God. Um, so these election issues, there will be a new president. After the election, the new president gets to pull two more cards from the deck and then has the opportunity to enact up to three of the total deck. So at least one of these is going to be enacted. More maybe. And the players are allowed to kind of cajole each other with, you know, I'd vote for you if you enact, if you promise to enact that. And once they kind of make a decision on that, then you start the election and there are three bid rounds. Why there are three is kind of not clear. Uh, it's kind of like the two voting rounds in Junta. But going around the table, each person is allowed to slip secretly cash donations in front of people saying, I'm voting for him, essentially. It doesn't state anything about whether or not you're allowed to make any statements about the money that you're putting under anyone. I would generally allow that under any kind of table talk rules that would be there. But some people might not want to be able to say that, be able to have that kind of table talk. Um, you're allowed to bid on yourself. If you don't put any money under anyone, you'll be out of the rest of the decision you won't be able to bid in any other round. So there's one reason you want to put some money forward at the beginning and continue putting money uh, through the rounds to make your decision at the end where you want to throw your money. And of course, any money that you put has to be at least a dollar. You have to put a card in. So you're helping someone even if you don't decide to go with them at the end. Um, once everyone's bid through three rounds, now we go to the Capitol Hill. And here what's going to happen is everybody's uh, donations are going to be flipped over. And whoever has the most cash in front of them is the new president. If there's a tie, you go to the Supreme Court. Hmm. What about the House of Representatives? No. Um, and essentially what that says is go find someone not involved in the game. Yeah, right. Uh, and ask that person to make the decision arbitrarily then they say children make good Supreme Court justices. That sounds dangerous. I, you could roll a die, though, or whatever, in the event that there's a tie there. Then all the bids go back to the Treasury. The former president hands the seal, or whatever, to the new president. And the new president gets one of the four cards that was here. Now, these are going to be one-time only plays. So, like, use this power during Wall Street, and it has some effect. If you don't play them, they'll be worth $5 at the end of the game in terms of victory points. Uh, the first president in the game doesn't get an executive privilege and to tell you the truth there's no real advantage to being first except maybe you get to draw some more consumer cards 
but if you're playing the business cards uh, not simultaneously, everyone gets to see what they do. You can decide which way you want to do that, whether you want to kind of... The only way simultaneous makes sense if you, is if you're kind of hiding them from, and everybody reveals at the same time, I would say. Okay, the first president is then allowed to clean up uh, a single law from the previous administration. If there's any laws kicking around, and laws say law on them, he can just discard it, and it'll go in here. Something he doesn't like, perhaps. Uh, then he flips over two new legislation cards, puts them in the yellow spots, and then he chooses eight or three of these eight cards. Six of them were open for discussion in the election. Two of them are new. And, you know, he couldn't have made any promises about them, but he could have said something like, well, I'll enact these two and uh, maybe one of these, or I'll enact this one and this one unless I want to enact both of these. You, know? <laughs> you can make promises like that to try to garner the votes. And of course, you're not bound to promises any more than politicians are to their campaign promises. You always have to choose three legislation cards. If there's any protests up here, you have to choose a legislation card that satisfies the protest. So for example, Zombie Reagan for president is satisfied by, uh, or will be satisfied by a conservative law. If, there are, if there's any conservative legislation you can put into play, you can cancel out this protest with that legislation. Oops, go up here. <laughs> but that wouldn't be very obvious. Um, and you must cancel out any protests that there are on the board. You must get as many of them as you possibly can. You must do that before uh, enacting any, any legislation that doesn't satisfy any, but you can choose your order within that otherwise. So I could use, let's say there was both Christian and conservative here. Uh, and if I had two cards that matched, I don't know. I can't find them. All right, let's say there's both yeah. Christian and conservative protests in play. And this card was here, and there was another conservative card here. I could use this one to satisfy the conservative and then leave the Christian protest in play, or I could play uh, to get rid of both. You don't have to optimize how many protests you get rid of. Um, the main reason that you don't, you don't particularly want to satisfy these, they don't do you any good, uh, they just limit what the next president's going to have to do. Now, if the legislation does not have a law icon, for example, this one, uh, you follow whatever the effects are on the card and you discard it. But if it has a law icon on it, it is a continuing effect that remains down here and until it's revoked, it'll stay in play. And after the president's taken three uh, pieces of legislation and enacted them, the rest will be discarded and perhaps come back into the game. At the end of the Main Street phase, as we said before, if there's no more of these, the game ends. And at that point, you count your money. Executive privilege cards that aren't used are worth five bucks each, and whoever has the most cash wins. If there's a tie, it goes back to the Supreme Court, whatever that means. Okay. There's special rules for various business cards. Uh, we already saw the sponsored ones. These are basically just more information than is given on the card, a little bit more detail. Most of that information is on the card. Likewise, legislation, they give more details about what there is in the different cards. And then there's a big list of the Kickstarter uh, supporters and such not. Nice little played uh, reference here. We'll see how that works. But there's very little in the way of rules, so this should probably be all that one needs. What I'm going to do after this is shuffle everything up, set it up, and play, I think, a five-player game of this. Solitaire, of course. Laugh at me if you like. Um, and then come to a review based on that experience. And, and whatever insight I can draw from the game from playing it in that manner. Should give you kind of a feel for how it plays through. And, well, if you want to skip through the playthrough and don't really want to watch this in play, you can just jump ahead to the review and hear whatever 
I, I managed to glean from that. All right, up it goes. 